So when you're trying to get your eggs back, regardless of when you broke up, giving them a proper and healthy break from you is key. It is fundamental. So instead of forcing reconciliation, reattraction, however you want to call it, instead of forcing something to happen, you should let it do so organically. So have patience and give your ex time. But don't just, of course, mope and wait for them to reach out to you. I want you to work on yourself in the meantime. Otherwise, you will be disappointed. The more you develop emotionally and mentally in general, the more attractive you will become. And therefore, the higher your chances of getting back with your ex will get. And even if you don't get your ex back, simply by working on yourself, right, it will get you into the best possible position to meet someone even better later on and, well, make things work with that other person. Now, while you're busy working on yourself, focusing on yourself, investing in yourself, your ex will be wondering why you haven't perhaps reached out yet. I mean, after all, they probably expect you to cave and chase after them since at the end of the relationship, they kind of had all the power since I assume they dumped you. And once they become curious, it's only a matter of time before they start to miss you. And if they do end up maybe missing you, they will also start focusing way more on the positive aspects of your relationship and less on the negative aspects. And this really makes them more likely to contact you in some way, shape or form down the line somewhere in the future. Now, this peculiar response is possible due to two psychological biases. The first one being the fading effect bias, which basically the idea behind that, uh, behind it is that over a longer period of time, memories associated with negative emotions tend to be forgotten quicker uh, than those associated with positive emotions. And of course, then there's also the rose-colored glasses bias that is making all this possible, which basically the idea behind that, uh, behind it is that the passing of time, right, it invokes nostalgia, it generates nostalgia, and therefore it makes certain events feel way more pleasing and positive than they actually were. Uh, in your ex's mind. So in a nutshell, the best way to get somebody's attention is to remove yours. Yet, there is a caveat here. Your ex must get to this place of missing you on their own. You must therefore give them time and with it the gift of missing you. Meaning, it has to be your ex's idea to reach out in the first place. And that probably ain't gonna happen until a good chunk of time has passed. But that's fine. You want your ex to have the freedom to play the field and see what else is out there. You want them to have the freedom to come back to you at their own pace, not at the, at the pace that you are trying to dictate for them. Because it's that same freedom that then gives you both the opportunity to thoroughly reflect why your relationship fell apart in the first place and what you would both need to do to make it actually work the next time around and, you know, whether it's even worth it to try and make it work the next time around. Now, most people, they fail at this because there simply isn't enough time between the breakup and the makeup, right? They fail to have to cultivate a healthy and lasting relationship with their ex. And even worse, they can get perspective on why their relationship didn't work out, nor what issues and flaws that they need to improve upon. And then what happens? Well, the relationship, of course, falls apart for the same reasons it probably fell apart before or initially. Now, don't be one of these people. Don't just sit around passively and just wait for your ex to reach out. Yes, sure, it has to be their idea to rekindle things in the first place. They have to be the one reaching out if they have currently dumped you. But in that meantime, like in the meantime, while you are 
quote unquote waiting for them, you should work on yourself. You should approach the whole thing with the mentality that they're probably gone for good and you should start rebuilding your life as though you're not going to get them back, you know? I mean, otherwise, you could blow your shot if they actually do come back because if you just focus on them all the time while you are uh, waiting for them to reach out and you don't do any self-improvement work, well, you're usually going to be very desperate. You're usually going to act very desperate when your ex does in fact reach out and just somehow in some way uh, gets back uh, into your life. So that's the risk I just don't think you want to take, right? And to minimize this risk, uh, all you really have to know, the kind of the key point of this video is that timing is essential. It's key. And this goes for you, as we, as you've noticed, this goes for your ex because they have to uh, figure out whether this relationship is worth rekindling and how they could make it work in the, the next time. And this goes for everyone involved, right? So that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to go deeper into my eggs back process, my philosophy for mending a relationship, you should download my reattraction cheat sheet. Um, the link to the whole thing is going to be in the description below this video. Just click it and you'll be able to access the cheat sheet. And that's that. It's a really cool, sexy, nicely designed one page PDF document with a bunch of tips and advice and guidelines and all that good stuff. So check it out. And well, that's pretty much it from my side. Take care.